Hey, this is Jesse Canton. Man, I am so glad that you took the time to download this podcast. Listen, it's getting ready to be a blessing to you. It is power packed full of wisdom. Listen, as you hear this episode and you maybe you want to be a blessing to this podcast, well, you can hit me up on Cash App. Type in Jesse E. Canty, J-S-S-E, the letter E, C-A-N-T-Y, with the dollar sign, of course. And you can be a blessing. Anything you give will be appreciated. I thank you, and I pray that nothing but God blessings and his best be upon you. Take care. Hey, this is Jesse Cantor with another episode of How Bad Do You Want It? Listen, you will be surprised of how many people who are questioning God, why me? I mean, they are faced and hit with stuff that have came out of the blue and have caused their faith to be shaken. And they're wondering if they can recover from it or why it even happened to them. Well, that's what this episode about. Listen, I want to talk about it in the morning title this one. Hear me good. It happens. Let's talk about it. Yeah, man. Man of wisdom. Man of wisdom. From the pulpit to the podcast. From the pulpit to the podcast. To the podcast. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of How Bad Do You Want It? I am your host, Jesse E. Canty. Man, I missed you. Glad to be back live in the studio. I got something to say, so let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come, God, just for a few minutes. Father, I pray right now that you lead me and guide me, God, and cause our ear to hear what the Spirit of God, your Spirit, has to say unto us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. This is episode number 219, and yes... I'm going to play on words because I want to get my point across. I'm not much of a cusser. I don't cuss. I don't like cussing at all. And I try not to cuss at all. But you get what I'm saying when I say it happens. The world would say it another way. But the clean way would be stuff happens. And the reason why I wanted to entitle it that because I wanted to make an impact. And what I love about talking on this podcast, what I feel even stronger now, especially getting ready to go into this new year, to take this podcast and be a little bit more applicable or more uh, applicable to people's lives who may not uh, understand a lot of church lingual, lingual, I think they call it lingual, church talk, and just talk to them regularly and understand that, listen, everybody at some point of time in their life have faced some adversity, some unexpected mishaps that floored them. I mean, I'm talking about some things that you're facing. Some may be facing it right now. And you, it, what it does, it can lead you to a path where I've seen everybody do it at some point of time. You throw your hands up and you happen to look up and you start to ask God, Excuse me. You start to ask God, why me? I mean, it hits you like an explosive rocking pain that tears your heart out the frame. And you look to God and say, God, why did you allow this to happen? It can be something as losing a job, uh, repossession, losing a home, uh, sickness in your body unexpected death. I mean, you can read the newspaper. You can look at the news and see the things. I mean, the social media have really made the world small. Sometimes my wife and I just turn on social media and begin to look and see how much stuff happens to people every day around the world. And it blows our minds. And there's many people that have gone through things and that and you and I have. We face things that have hit us. And it made us scratch our head. And really kind of look at things in life and particularly look at God a little sideways if you ain't careful. It will start make you wondering, why did you allow this to happen? And what's up with that? 
Well, listen, I'm not here acting like I can tell you why God have allowed things to happen, but I can tell you the effects of it. I can tell you, he, number one, he's still God. Number two, and I'm not going to throw a lot of scriptures at you, at you, but I am going to give you a scripture that makes so much sense. And I'm glad the Bible says it. It never promised us that we wasn't going to go through anything. Listen, I'm talking to you. It never promised you that stuff wouldn't happen. I mean, I, I, I have never, I've been preaching for years, but I have never, never felt the need to defend God. He's too big for me to even try to defend him. And that's what God gave me peace about many years ago. I used to try to say, wait a minute, these people are looking at God wrong and I need to show them that God is not this and this. And God showed me, you will never hear me trying to intervene and speak up and convince them who I am. God knows who he is. He is a just God. There is nothing that have happened to you, though it may feel unfair. I'm telling you now, your God is still just. And he never promised that you weren't going to go through something. And yes, we do be attacked by the enemy. And, you know, Satan's come at you all kind of ways, and etc. That happens too. But I'm also here to tell you, if you have been given life, and if you live here on this earth long enough, guess what you're going to find? Stuff happens. It happens. No unexplainable, no explainable reason. We can't even explain it. But it happens. The question is this, not just why it happens, but rather, can you recover from it? Or how can you pick up from where you're at and move past and move on. Well, that's why I titled this. It happens because you got to first embrace it. As I was preparing for this, I read over some things and I saw many places online where it says 10, 10 reasons, uh, 10 ways to move past tragedy, eight ways to move past tragedy. I could have easily copied it and went down every one of them. And I think they was extraordinary. A lot of them was wonderful. I had a great impact on it, on me, but I wanted to talk in layman's terms and show you that, listen, you have to realize if you are going to be living or have life here on earth, there are some things that's going to happen in your life that cannot be explained and that may not ever be understood on the side of heaven. But you have to be able to have faith in God. Can I go deeper? And you also have to have faith in you. Now, when you put those two together, you have to have faith in the assignment that God have given you. So no matter what happens and it may hurt. Don't you know you can still get up and do, go to work and do what you need to do, even though tears are falling down your face, even though your heart is broken? There are so many people that have allowed their mishaps to ground them. Yes, planes fall out the sky. But do you know when I found out, when I talked to a pilot uh, before he, he flew uh, uh, our plane that we was flying on that day, he says there's tons of things that goes wrong when we're in the air. But most of the people, he said none of the people back in the back, the passengers even know about it. He says it's so many things that goes wrong, that goes wrong when I'm flying this plane that the passengers have no clue and they don't need to know it because it never is that bad where it grounds the plane or crashes the plane. He's and then that made me start thinking such is life. Everybody, what happens if the smallest thing happened and it caused you to crash? And there's people like that, that, Anything, one thing can go wrong and it causes their life to come to a stop. It's stopping place. It crashes. They give up on everything because they have had to face something that 
was challenging to, to, to them. But you have to adapt the mindset. It happens. And Jesus basically told us that in so many words in Matthew 6, 34, he says, take no thought for tomorrow. For tomorrow shall take the thought for the things of itself. This is the part I like. Because when I first got saved, first start reading the Bible, I read this verse and I said, what is Jesus saying? Never really heard it preached much. Never heard this. And see, I love the I love the verses in the Bible that most people don't quote. You don't really hear nobody preaching those verses most of the time. And Jesus says something like this. I'm going to quote it. He says, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. I mean, when I read that, I says, what is he saying? I would even ask certain people and they really kind of staggered through it like they didn't know what he was saying. Well, Jesus was saying a mouthful. He was implying that we should not worry about the future. Because each day contains an ample amount of burden and of evils and sufferings. In other words, each day have enough trouble on its own. Don't let your future or what could happen tomorrow frustrate you or cause you to worry at the point to the point of giving up or being fearful. Because each day has already has been set aside to face to that where you're going to be facing a certain amount of trouble. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, thank you for taking the time to listen to this podcast. God has blessed us to have listeners all around the world. And I thought to myself, I said, maybe there's somebody that wants you to have a prayer request. I want you to pray with them concerning anything, your family or whatever it is. If that's be so, listen, drop me an email at Jesse Canty podcast at Yahoo dot com. J-S-S-E-C-A-N-T-Y podcast at Yahoo dot com. I would love to hear from you. I love to pray with you. And I want you to have a blessed day. This is what this verse is saying. And in the English version, it says there is no need to add to the troubles that each day may bring you. So when you look at this term, it happens. And I'm going to use the term that the world would say with the profanity in it. I'm not going to say it, but you know what I'm talking about. Well, that was a slang phrase that was used as a observation that life is full of of unpredictable events. That phrase is an acknowledgement that things happen to people seemingly for no particular reason. Now, that's not what I'm saying, but I am saying things happen to people and I believe they have a particular reason you may not understand it i may not understand i can turn this podcast right now into a testimony moment and tell you 15 different things that happened to me in my life that i still never got a wisdom or never got a revelation or understanding from god but i knew i couldn't stop living from it i knew i couldn't get to a place where where this happened to me and i just quit i almost talk called this podcast this episode here, nobody cares. And the reason why I almost called it that because I'm thinking what, what, what led to this is you'd be surprised how many people has an excuse of why they gave up. I mean, they, you can they lay the excuse out on why they quit, why they're not where they want to be. And it started hitting me. Wait a minute, man. Everybody has an excuse. Everybody has something that have happened that what we consider is bad. I mean, family, families face adversity. <laughs> Trust me out when we try to act like we're perfect. Man, we got some imperfect people in our families. And the person that I'm talking to, you imperfect in your family. Adversity hit our family. Our family fights, argues, go through all types of things. Oh, man, some dark secrets in our families. People facing financial adversity. 
There's some people that's going through sickness in their bodies, all types of things. And I'm here to tell you, it happens. Well, I hear you, Jesse, but what are you telling me? Well, (laughs) in that saying, it happens. What do you do? When it happens, you need to just flush it and move on. I mean, I'm talking about really. Don't let this thing that happened to you, now follow me if you will. Listen to this. Whatever happened to you, the it that happened in your life, if you don't flush it it's gonna st- and let it start lingering in your thoughts, it's going to cause you to have stinking thinking. And not only when you have stinking thinking that's been cluttered up in your brain, you've been running it over in your head because you can't seem to move past it. And when you fail to flesh, a.k.a. get past the stuff that happens in your life and you let it continue to linger in your mind, your thoughts start to become stinking. And when you have stink lingering around in your head, it's going to eventually leak out of your mouth. In other words, your words are going to be filled with negativity. People can tell when you haven't gotten past some hurt in your life because they can linger there for a while. That's why you got to take that uh, analogy and that I think I'm not even trying to be funny. I'm dead serious. We have to flush it. And when you flush it, you say bye bye. You don't go back and visit it no more. You don't wonder what was that that you got rid of. Listen, you can't move past the stuff that happens in your life, whether it's divorce, whether it's somebody who you thought was going to be your friend and they turned out to be the opposite. Yeah, you're going to cry a while. You're going to to have a moment, a setback, but don't let that setback cause you to never get back. Flush it in your life. Say goodbye to it. Move on. It's okay that it happens because that's normal. But you still have to get over it. It's okay that stuff happens, but you still have to understand that life goes on. I had things hurt me, man, spiritually from people that I Respect it highly. And when I let that stuff linger in my head, guess what? It embraced or invited hate, bitterness. And I'm telling you, man, it ain't nothing more unattractive than a person who is locked up with bitterness in their heart. Because you're seeing things that have happened to you as woe as me. And it, it tends to isolate you and, 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 and make you set in a place that I call pity party. And man, when you start doing that, nobody can encourage you because by the time they get the encouragement out of their mouth to try to try to try to try to encourage you, you immediately come back with. Yeah, but. And you 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 regurgitate. All of that that you've been holding on and never got past, it comes out of your mouth. You have to look at things that happens to you differently. Nothing ever goes away until it teaches us what we need to know. Did you hear what I just said? Ah, I'm tired of this. I mean, I'm ready for God. And then you want to hear somebody lie to you and tell you if you give $32 and 75 cent, it's going to be gone. All your problems going to be gone today. It don't happen that way. There are some things that God will not remove, but he will give you the grace to get past it. Did you hear me? I'm telling you the truth. I hate to tell people lies. There are some things that God will not remove from you but he'll give you the grace and the strength to get past. Let me say this again. If I can, nothing ever goes away until it teaches you what you need to know. When everything seems to be going against you, 
you got to remember that the airplane takes off against the wind, not with it. So when you can't understand why it happened, you better understand it may be a setup for you to go higher. An airplane takes off against the wind, not with it, according to Henry Ford. So you got to understand that everything that has happened to you, I do believe it's a reason. Even if you may not understand it right now. And then you have to understand too, that everything comes to you at the right time in your life. Let me say that one more time. Everything comes to you at the right time in your life. Now, some people only hear that as blessings, good things that, that lifts our spirit comes to us at the right time. I believe that there are times when tragedy can strike and it struck you at the right time. God allowed it to hit you when he knew you was ready to endure it. You was able to endure it. And it may not feel like it, but you don't go by your feelings. And you have to continually remind yourself everything is going to be all right. It may not be all right today, but it's going to be all right eventually. I can't just sit and tell you, snap your fingers and pray and, 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 and do this and do that. And all the things going to go away. No, it's some stuff that you just got to take that cross and throw it on your back. And continue to move the person who slapped you, the person who spit on your face, the person who whipped your back, the person who hurt your heart, the person who, who will abandon you. But you still carry your cross. That means whatever burden life brings to you, you got to be able to carry it and still make it do what it do. Don't let yourself Get in a funk, a place of depression and never can move past it. And I think one of the first things, number one, you got to have faith in God. But number two, you got to remind yourself. It happens. Stuff happens. Sufficient until the day is the evil thereof. See, we can't really preach this like we want to in church because people don't want to hear the truth like this. You're going to face adversity, but you're going to get past it. You know what I think? This is the last thing I'm going to say here. You know what I think that is mind blowing? And this is truth. Just when that caterpillar, he thought his world was over. The change that took place in the caterpillar, it started within him. Scientists and, and believe that, that the chemistry in him began to change before anything else done on the outside. He knew he felt different. He knew he felt uh, that, it, that, that his whole world was changing. When the caterpillar thought the world was over, guess what happened? He became a butterfly. Man, if you knew, maybe not why it happens, but what it's going to produce for you. Maybe if you knew what this thing that happened is making you, you wouldn't think your world is over. You would be like that caterpillar who thought his world was over but he understood that his new world was just beginning and in God made him into a butterfly. God is changing the thing that you have counted on, the thing that you depended on the most. Nothing come to you. If you, it's not the timing and you're not ready to handle it. It happens. But keep the faith in God because you're able to endure this. You're able to overcome it. 
You're able to come out of this thing stronger than you went in it. If you never get the answer, then get the jewels and get the values that's going to come from it. It's going to teach you how to depend upon God and stand under the strength that he's given you. You can endure this and you will endure it. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now that the listener heard this with wisdom and with your spirit. I pray that it empower them, God, that it calls us, God, to walk in obedience according to your will for our lives. We decree it to be so right now. We thank you, God, for releasing every shackle of depression, every demonic spirit that has been uh, trying to influence our thoughts. We renounce it right now. And we give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. How bad do you want it? Huh? 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 Yeah. Pursuing my destiny. Pursuing my destiny. Yeah. How bad do you want it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. From the pulpit to the podcast. Pursuing my Hey, business owners, this is Rashad Brown with Swipe Fast, located in Columbia, South Carolina. We are excited to be partnering with Jesse E. Canty and the How Bad Do You Want It podcast. Since 2017, Swipe Fast has been helping business owners like you save up to 99% in their debit and credit card processing fees. So if you process business to business or business to consumer payments, we have solutions that will meet your needs and would love to hear from you. You can reach us at swipefast.com forward slash save. That's swipe, spelled with the Y, or contact us at 1-800-597-0713. Don't forget to let us know that Jesse E. Canty sent you. Have a blessed day.